So this week we have a special guest on our podcast. It's like good and good enough, so you gotta be great, and I'm gonna do whatever it takes, giving you my all, ever retake. This is a man that I look look up to as a role model. You uh, hope so, right? I, you, you, you'd hope. Um, and somebody who I aspire to be like, and it is, in fact, my father. Luke? Uh, it's, yeah, my father, my father, Darth Vader. <laughs> Hey, we're visiting all the way from Denver, from Colorado. Denver, Colorado. He came out just to talk to you guys. My dad ran a recruiting business firm for over 30 years, right? For over right. 30 years. 32. 32 years. Whew. That's a big. That's big. So he knows a little bit about running the business. Um, so we had a question. Number one, a lot of people that could be listening or watching, um, they are people that may be starting their own business, but also they're just interested in business, they're going to get a job. Now you worked in a recruiting business. Recruiting, for people who don't know, is when people are looking for jobs, sometimes they go to an outside source. You Search explain it, actually. You explain yeah. it, you explain it. What is an employment good? agency? You find people, uh, you work with clients who are looking to hire people, you match people with jobs. So I placed accountants and financial analysts with uh, corporations in Los Angeles. I did that for 32 years. So some people call them headhunters, recruiters, executive search, all the same thing. I like headhunters better. Yeah, it's all, it's okay. it's all over LinkedIn. Like, sounds more violent. Look, worked with LinkedIn too. Right. But it's really, a, it's a matter of developing your clientele and then being able to provide them with the kind of people that they're looking for and knowing what they're looking for. So right. that, that's what a headhunter does. Um, so for those people, not just one of the first questions we had, as far as uh, like recruiting is concerned, and people looking for a job and all that stuff, we wanted to know what, in your mind, what are, what are the most important factors for implementing a job interview when you're when you're in, going to a job interview? Okay, I will tell you. If you ask me, after 32 years, what would be the number one complaint hiring managers have? about candidates and in interviews is that they don't get detailed enough. Because mm -hmm. what happens is a lot of people use buzzwords. Let's say you've got an accountant and he's interviewing with people who are the controller or the CFO or the VP of finance mm -hmm. and the accountant will sit there and say something like, well, I handle the financial statements. That could mean a lot of things to a lot of different people. And you have to obviously translate this into your own industry, whatever, mm -hmm. whatever you're doing. It can mean a lot of things to a lot of different people. There's nothing wrong with saying it, but you have to mm -hmm. follow it up with what I mean by that is, mm -hmm. and then get detailed. And then get detailed in a manner, not just like you're relaying information like you do every day on a day-to-day -day basis at work, which is what I call the day-to-day -day way of being, because that's fine for work. But in an interview, you want to leave people with the sense that they were standing there watching over your shoulder. And they have the experience wow. of having actually watched you do the job, not just got the information, which is what you do at, at work. So I tell people, you want to offer them more detail. Now sometimes you don't know the hiring manager, what their style is, you know what your boss is. So sometimes you, your initial answer might have enough detail. So you want to offer them the opportunity to tell you what they want and they don't. So it might, you might give an initial answer and then say, would you like me to go into more detail on that? Mm -hmm. They'll tell you whether they want it or not. <laughs> so many times I'll have managers say to me, I, we like this guy, this, he, this guy went into detail. We really had a sense he knew what he was doing. And it really gives you, it leaves a sense that you knew what you were doing. Also, it also gives them a chance to really hear you communicate. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of, that would be a fundamental that you could take away from you. Communication. Yeah. I think All that's right. really well put. Just the, the point is, you sound more like you know what you're talking about when you really, you know, you come across like you know what you're talking about. Right. They can hear how you communicate, and to a certain degree, they can hear how you think. Mm -hmm. Because you have to process through something. You have to, you have to have a beginning, middle, and an end of okay. it. All right. It's well, interesting because I did that. I was at an interview for a previous job, and the way I. I got it and I was hired on the spot is because we were talking about a certain subject and I gave him a strategy of how I would go about it, like a very detailed strategy and boom, called me up next day, we'll pay, like, he was going to pay me lower and I said, yep. I want to get paid more and he said, okay, we'll give you one more yep. and you got it and it worked. When you walk out of that interview, you want them to look at each other saying, this is the guy. Right. Let's get him in here, stop all the other interviews, yep. let's nail it down. And they'll offer you more money based on that. 
I think you told me once, uh, which I think this is great for anybody who's watching and might be looking for a job, is you may not want the job, but when you go into the interview, you go into, with the intention, <laughs> I'm getting the job. Yes, well, now, right. and then the day, whether you take the job or not, that's a different story. But you want to walk out of there and you have the offer on the table. Do you want me to mm -hmm. speak to that a little? Um, if, yeah, yeah, sure. sure. Go for it. So the other aspect, well, I call it strategic interviewing. Many people go to the interview with the intent that they're going to find out whether they like the job or not. Which mm -hmm. makes sense, mm -hmm. obviously. The only trouble is, the hiring managers pick up that your intent was to find out whether you liked the job or not. So I call them yeah. up afterwards, they say to me, you know, after thinking about it, I, this is a job for me. I'm ready to be enthusiastic now. Call the hiring manager, the hiring manager says that was a good candidate, but it seemed like they were just shopping around. We were hoping to meet somebody who was actually interested in us. Yeah. So the coaching for candidates when you're interviewing is make it a primary intent. Now, I'm not gonna say this out loud, but the primary intent is, the reason I'm here is to receive a job offer. Now inside of that, you'll find out about the company, but when you make that your, your intention, you come yeah. across more focused, more interested, and more enthusiastic, and it just lands very differently with the hiring managers. That's awesome, so it's, a lot, it's not only about your skills, it's about the way you present yourself. Attitude. Or, as we say, who you're being. In the right. face of that. Because okay. we're all human beings, we can sense um, exactly. feelings exactly. and emotions out of people. You could tell when someone yeah. is very low in energy, yeah. and you could tell when someone yeah. is very high in energy. Yeah. And exactly. obviously, that's yeah. what they're trying to uh, right. uh, exactly. exchange. So, okay, so so um, that's awesome. So, so in, in addition to uh, doing the recruiting gig, <laughs> if you call that a gig, for 32 years, my, my dad uh, started a real estate investment company. He's been doing that for the past, what, two years now? Year, two years? Uh, three. So we're really interested in, and I know a lot of people are, because that's really a lot of people's end games, build your assets. Um, we want to know, how did you start it? What was your process like in the beginning? Because, and just really quickly, and this really interests us, because uh, the way we started was we just kind of went, Let's go. Let's make it happen. And yeah. I kind of feel like maybe yeah. that's just the way to do it. But somebody who's experienced and knows that, and we want to hear it from you. Well, I have a coach I use for business, and so this is part of the business. Mm -hmm. So my phone calls to the coach would go like this. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. And I just kept taking the next step. And it really, it was a willingness to leap into something unknown and tolerate the... <laughs> The anxiety that went along with that, and the micro failures, and, and the micro failures, right? You know that feeling, mm. and to and you know just tolerate it and keep going to the next step. Don't let anyone stop you. I you know, consistent mm -hmm. persistence. Where did yeah. you hear that from? That's like we were. I mean, we, were, we all read the ten X rule right. by Grant Cardone, and he yeah. says, and I was just listening to this week. He says, over commit and then figure out the rest later. He's like, yeah. jump into the pool and then learn how to swim. Now, I wouldn't do that if it was a pool, but when it comes to business and when it comes to things that are related to just life in general, that's that's the way to do it. Unlike swimming. Unlike swimming, swimming. right. <laughs> yeah, don't do that. Don't yeah. do that swimming. It's, nice, it's nice to hear that we're, that we're on the right track. That, right. Yeah. That's, that's a really good, that's really awesome. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to take the... Yeah, yeah go yeah, for it, please. Cool. Um, so, aside from all the real estate and all that stuff, um, what what I'm curious about, and I'm sure they're curious about it as well, since we're just starting up, um, what was it like to get from point A from the beginning to point B? Like, like just to be more specific. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm sure it was difficult in the beginning. I'm sure it was difficult in the you know throughout the whole journey, but. You know, was it was it hard? How did you keep yourself motivated? What kind of routines and practices have you implemented over the years? Keep yourself on track. Keep yourself moving. Um, like, and what? Or yeah, actually, that's, so that's that good enough. Yeah, right okay. yeah. So yeah, it's looking for the next deal. Okay. You got to keep right. looking for the next step. It's it's you got to stay in action. Mm -hmm. So it's what's the next action I can take? Because you can get distracted by the chatter in your head. Right. No, that's, I know that. Yeah. I that's know that well. Chatter. The, the chatter in your head will distract you. When the truth is, the only thing that makes any difference is either taking action or not taking action. Right. So um, for the real estate, is you got to keep looking. You know, I have, I have a certain profile I'm looking for right. in a house, and I'm looking around the country in, in, the, in the states. And so we go to different cities, and we look to see if properties, you can look at Zillow or 
or mm -hmm. the various real estate sites. And you can try to see what fits into that profile that's going to generate that kind of return. And then we fly to the city and we get a real estate agent, we get a property manager, we go start looking at the things. And, and you, you have to spend time on it. And, and yeah. it's a constant chipping away at it. So massaging the deal. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And a lot of, right. of self-education as well. Yeah. You got to keep, the, take the next step. There's always the next step. It's interesting because this is the type of thing you can't go to school to learn this. I feel like I, I think there's certain parts of it you can, but is there really like a school you go to to I, learn how to? I start don't know. A business? I just, the school of experience. You're talking about real estate. Well, really any business. Well, is there a school of experience? The to other start? The head thing. I you know I got. That's three other degrees, wow. <laughs> which has nothing to do with the head thing. Right. And I just d dove in. I found myself a mentor. Oh, that's a big deal. I that's found myself good. a mentor, and uh, I allowed myself to be coached by the mentor. You gotta that's, be willing to be coached. Yes, that's hard. Finding thing. mentors is easy. Allowing mm -hmm. him to coach find, you. Finding is mentor hard is hard. not necessarily easy. It's hard, but what's way harder is to be like yeah. willing to just be wrong and just whatever he says, yeah. just go or or shoot. That's like, right. Okay. That's what they said to do. They know what they're doing. Just do it. Just don't even ask questions. That's that one. Before, like, like, it's hard. Like, it's good to have a mentor. It's good to like allow yourself to be coached by the mentor. That I mean, I can assume that probably took a, a lot of time to like finally commit to doing that. Mm -hmm. When, when, when you were talking before about how you were do, the, the whole self talk thing, and you just kind yeah. of have to disregard that and keep moving. What did you do, like? What kind of like practices did you implement to kind of like say, like to kind of shut those up in order to keep moving? All right, it's a question of staying in reality or in the story I have about what's going on. Yes, that's a great way of putting it. Thank so, and this is what my coach trained me in. There's what actually happens, and then there's a whole interpretation about what happens that goes on. When I just stay with what's actually going on, in the real estate deal, for example. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can you, yeah, can you make it, like, put it in a practical example so it's like easy for anybody to enjoy it? Yes. So um, you, you put a house under contract, let's say, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden all sorts of stuff starts to pop up. So the internal dialogue is, oh, I made an error, or you bought a house. Right. Mm -hmm. And then somebody comes in to work on the house and they pull a wall off and then you have surprises. So the internal dialogue might be something like, I blew it. This is terrible. It's a terrible loss. Right. Just being in reality is, okay, so what choices do I have? Mm -hmm. You can fix the thing this way, that way, the other way. Mm -hmm. Just fix it. Move on to the next thing. Right. Because that's what yeah. there is to be done. This is perfect Part of the process. Because this is exactly what we're going through. Yeah, I don't, I just, I just want to like yeah. say it real quick. I, whoever is listening out there, that what he just said is he said it so passively but it's insanely important because it's like because there's what's going on in your head which it means absolutely nothing and then there's what's in front of you which means everything and usually what's in front of you is so much easier to fix than what's going on in your head yes and and you know you're in reality when it starts to get simple it's like it's like having a flat tire Flat tires don't complain. <laughs> They're just flat. <laughs> the people you know, who have the flat tires complain. Right. So you can kick and scream and have a temper tantrum after the flat tire. At the end of the day, you're still going to have to fix the tire. Mm -hmm. So you might as well just fix the tire without all the other drama around it. Mm -hmm. So, exactly. it, it, I mean, that's a that's one okay. way to no, that's, say that's, that's great. perfect. Right. You answered my question perfectly. Yeah. Thank you. Right, don't put your mental energy into the problem yeah. and complaining about the problem. Use your mental energy to Find approach the actual problem and fix it. Right. Yeah. Find a yeah. solution. And Which, it becomes simple at, the, yeah. at that yeah. level. When you're there, it's simple. That's how you know you're back in reality again. Yeah. Right. It gets simple. That's actually I've actually experienced that yeah. many times. That is yeah. that is a good point. Um, so Maybe. just just to uh, we have a couple more questions just to close things off. If they're too loaded of questions, just let me know. <laughs> in, in, in the the whole journey from beginning to end, whether it's when you started studying to starting recruitment, you can. Uh, well, I was going to say like like basically, I, I specifically wanted to focus on the real estate aspect because I think um, that's a person that. Oh, is that me what's more. I don't know. Okay, fine. That, that just I, I find that really interesting. So then I'll ask my but, question. And yeah, yeah, go for it, please. Question. Yeah, go. So um, from the beginning to end, as far as your career what you've done in the past till now, what would you say 
are things that you've done right, and what would you say are things you've done wrong? If that's even a, oh, an answerable looking question. Looking back over, you sp talking about the real estate or the head on thing, which well, is 32 Just throughout years. the whole, you know, your whole career of yeah, your whole career. being a small business owner and just going through the Thank whole, you. Yeah. yeah, that's what I mean. General process. um, processes. I think in, in being a small business owner, under the category of wrong would be, it's, it's easy to be isolated. Okay. And and that's not a good idea. You, even though I'm on my own because I ran my own business, mm. but to be in contact with other people, like create network, right, um, and stay in touch with other people. I uh, think the times that I allowed myself to be isolated was a mistake. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I would say. So that they work one. So they, so so you're saying that the the right thing to have done was to keep that network, but the wrong thing that you did was neglecting that network at at those times, yeah. so, which is very very. That pertains a lot to what we're doing. Oh, which, uh, we're all yeah, about the network. Answer my question perfectly. So what I what I, I want to I want to use the same two questions, but kind of like re uh, purpose them, I guess. Yeah. So specifically in the area of your real estate company. Okay. What's one thing? It, it, it can, I mean, I know there's a number of things, but what's okay. one thing that sticks out of your mind right now that you have done right thus far? Des deciding on a profile of what I wanted to buy. Okay, so you, so you decided this is my goal, and, and I'm not looking for anything else, and that's kind of helped you narrow down, just to keep it simple, and, and keep your head. Yeah. Straight. Otherwise, there's, there's there's always another house you can go. Right. Interesting. It's all. Yeah. There's, it's it's endless. Okay. I decided what we wanted to accomplish. And we stick with that profile. Okay. Right. So basically, by creating that goal, that goal. It, so this is very uh, uh, relevant to us also. You create that goal, and then you let the goal pull you uh, toward, or you let that pull your actions. That's right. So yeah. you have this goal, and you're like, okay, it needs to fit this profile for what us do I to, have to do to get there. Right. Exactly. Yeah, and, and there's some flexibility inside of that, but it basically cuts out a lot of other stuff so you can stay focused and it's a right. narrow window. It's funny, I thought you would have said, I mean, that's a great answer. I thought you were going to say um, that you're very, very specific and you're very, very picky. Oh. Which which in some places could be a weakness or a, a blessing. But what I do is I call my son and I ask his advice. Because <laughs> I, cause I'm See, clearly the real the estate expert. Because I've been doing that for all 25 years of my life. Guru <laughs> Buddha. I actually do call him and I, 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 I bounce ideas off of him. That's yeah. Because I, I like it and, and, and he's got good he's got good input for me. And then quickly, on the other side of that, oh, and then Shalom is going to, yeah, what's one thing, in, specifically in the area of your real estate company, that you've done wrong? And I know it's, it's been nothing that's been so critical, life or death, because um, obviously you're still going. I, but, you, you can allow yourself to get emotional uh, about a piece of property and then pay more than you should have paid. Okay. Uh, so that's kind of similar. That's basically like the topic. Like we talk about that all the time. It's kind of similar, similar to the whole self-talk thing. Like mm -hmm. listening to what doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Like you've made you've made the move. Now you have to figure out how to deal with the move that right. you made. Because in the real estate, it really should be about the numbers. If you're buying a house for yourself, then the emotions play a lot because right. you want to feel you want to enjoy right. the house, the title house, and all that. And the neighbor and all. But when it's an investment, it's just, you really got to be just about the numbers. I hear that. Okay. Cool. I mean, do we have any other questions? Because we covered mm -hmm. everything that we yeah. prepared for this. Special there Those are great just... questions. I was surprised by it. I didn't even look at them yet. Yeah, I was yeah. surprised. Was I was writing them out. To be honest with you. Um, okay. Well, then, if that's the case, thank you for joining us. This, All right. This was. This was. Thank the, you. Very nice to meet you. This was a good yeah. beginning to having Aww. interviews. Oh, I don't know. That was for me. Okay. <laughs>